next speaker is a remote presenter. Um, yeah, are you able to share your screen, Prabhat? Yes, let me share it. Can you guys see? I guess you can see it, right? Yes. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much. Take it away. All right. Thank you. Um, so my name is Prabhat. I am a postdoc at Caltech in Goddard's group. I'll be talking today about understanding the recombination and ionization reactions in bicarbonate carbonic acid equilibrium. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to talk about my work here. Uh, I work as a postdoc with Liquid Sunlight Alliance, which is a DOE hub. And uh, we are focusing on uh, understanding the chemistry in water micro environments. And the reason is that in catalytic and uh, and you know in in the hydrophobic places also there there's a difference in chemistry which happens in bulk water and we don't have much idea about it so we are we are interested in three different kind of interactions of course the properties of you know these ions in bulk water then in then in then on then on the surfaces and when the, those surfaces are surrounded by the hydrophobic medium as well so the thing is that that liquid water has you know a lot of peculiar properties in, in in a nano or micro confinement they can form long water wires in their ionic structure also a lot of data is there that how much time it requires for for you know hydronium and hydroxide ions to recombine but even for that uh, we we don't know exactly that how that changes you know on the surface or especially in the presence of, presence of a hydrophobic environment we have lot of we have had lot of you know modeling studies in the past and there was a three water chain presented by uh, Perinello and co-workers where, uh, where they, they simulated a 64 water box, which is around nine inch from in, in, in box length. The only problem with such kind of model is that the, the system size is so small that we cannot even, um, when, when, we, when we claim that it's a three water wire, the three water wire is exactly of the same length. Uh, the scan functional developed by uh, John Perdue at Temple was also used by Chen and Berge to predict the PK, but using the finite geometries only in, in periodic conditions. So we, we have had, you know, a lot of ideas for, you know, these finite size clusters. We know that a typical hydronium ion requires around 20 molecules to solvate it perfectly and which, which messes with the experimental spectra also. Similarly is the case of liquid water that we, re we require, you know, these many water molecules to, to create a finite cluster where one water molecule presents the properties of liquid water. But on the bigger scales and especially about the recombination reactions, we, we do not have much idea about it. So, so what we want to do is we want to validate a couple of things. One of them is whether this, like what are the properties of this three water wire and, and what kind of, you know, like whether that is the only uh, pro prominent pathway or is there a bias because we we have seen those results from Perinello with a, with a water box of just 64 molecules. So we want to expand on that scales, especially in the era where we have, you know, these GPUs, which, which can run the simulations way faster than one could run in 2011. And then the other thing is that experiments and DFT simulations, they are like a lot of, lot of DFT simulations can report up to less than 300 atoms. Experiments report at Avogadro scales and we, we have uncharted territory of nano to micro size droplets for which neither DFT nor experiments are useful. So we require a more uh, accurate and uh, more economic model as well. And which was developed in Professor Goddard's group at Caltech uh, uh, as known as the Rexpon force field. So I'll discuss a bit part of that Rexpon force field first. What we do here is that we divide the all the total energy terms of the uh, of, of a of a molecular structure in five parts: is bond angle, electrostatics, van der Waals, and hydrogen bond. And then different parts of these electrostatic components, th these energy components, come from uh, different ways of calculations. So what we do essentially is that we we take the bond and angle using using finite geometries from couple cluster methods. We compute the electrostatics using uh, a polarizable charge equilibration method, EQEQ, which combines the advantages of charge equilibration, the QEQ, the old QEQ model, which was implemented in, in, in LEMS already. And we, we, we add a root oscillator kind of uh, model for, for the core cell separation, which can uh, include the polarizability effects as well. And then for the non-wanted part, we do, uh, we do uh, PBE calculations in, in 
in in their solid crystal structures which can give us equation of states and using that we derive a universal non bond potential where the, the for for every atom we can derive the non bond potential using three parameters one of them being the well depth the other one being the um, the the equilibrium distance or the van der waal radius and the third one being the width of the curvature or, or, or to define the curvature and then we also compute the hydrogen bonded energy using the coupled cluster level calculation so combining these all we could generate the uh, water force field which was published in 2018 by Nas nasri far and goddard and i extended the same force field for hydronium and hydroxide so far and i am still working on extending that to hyd uh, or to bicarbonate ions so i will show three of the cases two of them related to the hydronium and hydroxide equilibria and the third one related to the bicarbonate equilibria for bicarbonate we still don't have results from md because we are still developing uh, the force field on, of, uh, on its full so first we take 3000 water water drop and we we perform the uh, rexpon md simulation uh, with rexpon we can achieve a performance of 100 picoseconds a day on every single node i mean the, these simulations were run mostly in the initial part of this year that time we were using cori and also we still don't have a gpu code which works well for for these calculations because we have our own way of defining uh, uh, charge calculations and van der waal calculations which 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 is which is still you know working in a cpu mode so at some point we will transition to the gpu mode for that and in in this case we have a system of almost 9000 atoms we have a hydronium and hydroxide ions uh, these two figures after this show the trajectory of hydronium and hydroxide ions. And what we try to see is that how often they recombine, which and and, and how far they are from the surface. So we see that these ions present like spend significant amount of time close to the surface. We calculate the distance from the surface, which which shows that uh, most of the times they are in on the surface or maybe one or two monolayers inside the surface. And then we also see that that their interionic distance that changes a lot it it comes closer to less than 10 mstrom like in in the quantum region where where these jump events can happen and they can recombine but since our force field as of now doesn't allow you know bond breaking and formation so we don't see the recombination but it well it very well describes those distances where where they almost uh, come in a recombinable distance Uh, the the next thing which you want to see is that when they are surface solvated or bulk solvated, what kind of uh, dynamic structure they possess. So we we calculate the uh, a dynamic radial distribution function, which shows that these ions for uh, for the longest time they are in the surface regimes around fifty five to sixty one percent of the time, and then for the rest of time they are in the in, in they are in the in in a region where they are at least three to four monolayers inside the surface. And then further, they are they are for a very few time they are uh, close to the center of mass, so that shows that they don't prefer the bulk solvation probably, and they want to be on the surface uh, for for the longest time. We have another case where we take eighteen thousand water molecules, uh, for which we get around twenty picoseconds of a day performance. I mean, these kind of systems we cannot even imagine that we can do DFT on them as of now. So, but but Rex one force field which we developed by us uh, can describe them very well. We we are only able to sample a, uh, a very slight phase space for, for these cases where we see that a hydronium ion moves mostly uh, on the surface. Sometimes it goes to three or four monolayers inside the inside the bulk, maybe more at, at points, while hydroxide mostly spends it, its time on the surface. Uh, we, we, can, we, we get a similar contribution uh, of, of surface to bulk properties for hydroxide and hydronium. We see that almost 14% of the time hydroxide wants to be on the surface, while Hydronium only 11%. Maybe there is some initial bias also because when we start the simulations, both the ions are at the surface, but hydronium it wants to be in, inside the inside the bulk of, after the after the passage of that initial time. So we are continuing much on these. We have four more uh, couple of more cases. It it took longer time for the force field development for hydronium and hydroxide because everything which works for just two atoms, the moment we make the system a bit more complicated. Uh, it requires a lot more simulations to 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 get more generalized uh, force field for for all the chemical environments. So th this is the MD part from uh, a classical MD model to say. And now let's move to the quantum MD part, which I did for the bicarbonate and carbonic acid equilibria. So we we take a water box of 216 water molecules. This is an unprecedented size. I was discussing the Perinello's work earlier, where they used 
64 water molecules, four molecules in each direction. Here we have six water molecules almost in each direction to, to, def to define this water box, almost 648 atoms. For that, we get around 400 femtoseconds a day uh, with VASP, which is installed on uh, Palmutter GPU. And I could say that it's it's way faster than any other machines where I have run uh, VASP so far. We, we, we were trying to run these systems earlier on Caltech HPC, and then we thought that maybe we need to uh, give up the idea because earlier either we, we need to use more nodes or we have to reduce the system size significantly using this what we what we observe is that we observe different kind of uh, uh, bicarbonate carbonic acid speciations forming at different times of simulation so as of now we have run the simulation for almost 20 picoseconds and we see that for most of the time there is bicarbonate but then it forms a cis kind of a structure of carbonic acid then for for very long time it also forms a trans trans uh, uh, car carbonic acid structure. Uh, we are still examining more uh, uh, geometries which which lead to the formation of cis trans and trans trans carbonic acid. We also see that it's the same proton which forms first the cis trans carbon uh, carbonic acid. Um, then it dissociates from that forms a uh, solvent separated hydronium hydro uh, hydronium bicarbonate pair and then later the same proton actually transfers to the trans trans kind of uh, to, to to form the trans trans uh, carbonic acid so we see separated ions for almost 43 percent of the time meta stable complex almost for seven percent of the time which 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 is you know three membered uh, like it's it's almost a planar ring which twists one side to form a separated ion pair and the, the other side to form a carbonic acid and then trans trans carbonic acid for 48% of the time. So our aim in this case is to basically study these geometries and then develop the force field more carefully for carbonic acid as well. Once that force field is included, then we will use uh, again the water drop droplets to simulate that and also to develop a, uh, uh, a, a finite, uh, uh, like using these finite side structures, uh, the, the solvent models as well. This is a one so, minute warning. All right, I'm I'm on my last slide. So uh, further, we want to develop the uh, non-bonded parameters for sodium and chloride ions also because we at some point want to also look at sodium and hydroxide and hydronium and chloride systems and then extend the same thing to sodium and bicarbonate kind of equilibrium systems as well. We, we also need to have practical non-polar environments around droplets, for example, benzene as a solvent model. So for that also, we are trying to expand our force field. And then... Uh, this is the part where we are running 2PT calculations. I mean, this is completely for, for from the classical MD perspective where we want to look at mostly the free energy and instantaneous diffusion. And uh, uh, we want to at some point determine the pH of these solutions, which, which is the primary goal uh, using, the, using the free energies uh, calculated from 2PT. With that, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, Bill Goddard with whom I am working and he's been very patient with these works because these the, the time skills which are required in these works is, is a, like very high scale. Like it takes a lot of time. So it took, more, took me almost a year to develop the force field and everything. Frances Hall is who is deputy director of LISA and she has been very uh, helpful with, with providing a lot of insights from stochastic uh, uh, simulations which she run. And Sunho Kohn, who is another postdoc at Caltech, who has done most of the works on the development of the charge equation model. And with that, I would like to thank the nurse and nurse officials who, allow, who give me this opportunity to present my work here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there any questions? Quick question. I didn't see any online yet. Anyone in the room? Okay, if you have a question, you can reach out to Prabhat another time. Uh, thank you so much.